I invite you all to take a moment to think about the individual journeys that each person makes when leaving their country to get to ours. Try to imagine the suffering and hardship caused by war or famine or natural disaster. To imagine the perpetual fear of living with political and religious persecution. To imagine leaving behind everything and everyone you know and seeking refuge thousands of miles away. Imagine a young child being taken away from his teachers and his classmates, having to learn a new language and to adjust to a different culture, let alone in Texas. The truth is, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if any of us could do it. I don't know if we could find the strength and courage that you see here today in the fathers and the mothers and children that find refuge in our city. Their, sport, their stories, like you, inspire me, and they make us appreciate the things that we often take for granted. I want to mention to you a young African man I met a few months ago named Rahani. When he arrived in San Antonio, he began working his way through high school and received his GED. He went on to San Antonio College, where he is now ready to transfer to university and pursue an international business degree, and he has a goal of returning home to help those who are left behind. In the time I've been on council, I've gotten to experience a sense of optimism and hope that is strong in San Antonio's refugee population. Now we are working to make sure that strength is matched by native San Antonians eager to lend a helping hand. We face many challenges as a community improving support and providing support for refugees. Some believe that government should provide all of the answers and solutions. Others see the private sector as providing the best ones. I think about it a little differently. The essence of our partners here today, and they're all around here serving food and providing services, is no matter what they're from the public sector, the private sector, or the faith community, is to provide hope, to be better neighbors during times of need. The strength of their work is in the compassion of those who support it through volunteerism or donations. Such compassion is at the heart of our city and it was shown in 2005 when the city of New Orleans was crippled by Hurricane Katrina. The images of that natural disaster are burned into the memory of the Gulf Coast, but it was the response of this city that was the enduring story. San Antonio, under the leadership of Mayor Phil Hardberger, opened our homes to over 12,000 evacuees, roughly the same number of international refugees that are here today. In a time of great need, our city provided housing, health care, food, and hope. President Franklin Roosevelt said, if your neighbor's house is on fire, you don't haggle over the price of your garden hose. Our Plaza de Armas is dedicated to President Roosevelt, and it's in his words that embody the servant heart of San Antonio. In 2005, in a time of national crisis, San Antonio stood with open arms and welcomed our neighbors with compassion and without conditions. Refugees in San Antonio, who, refer, who we refer to as newcomers, or who I like to call new neighbors, face many challenges from access to health care, housing, education, to transportation. But with organizations like Catholic Charities, the CRS, Northside Independent School District, the University Health System, and faith communities like St. Francis, St. Matthews, and the House of Prayer, our city is, a, is stepping up to be better neighbors. The partners in these efforts celebrate the true meaning of World Refugee Day, devoting time, material resources, and compassion to provide hope and a foundation for a new life in America. I am happy to let you know as a city councilman on behalf of the city council and Mayor Julian Castro that the city of San Antonio is not standing idly by. Since last year I've been convening refugee summit meetings at City Hall where service providers and new neighbors have been sharing their experiences and finding ways we can better collaborate to ease the transition into San Antonio. As a result of these summits, we've been able to identify some of the gaps in service that exist in our current system of support. The outcomes have included the collaboration among partners for refugee after school programs, as well as a commitment from VIA to translate bus routes in multiple languages along the Wurzbach corridor, where it is badly needed. VIA, VIA employees have also donated bus passes to the Refugee Children's Soccer Program, which is spearheaded by Bobby Blount, the president of the Northside Independent School District. Wouldn't it be great, very soon from now, that we have a level soccer field here that refugees and San Antonios from all over the city can come and celebrate the universal language? This is truly the World Cup, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. 
And we identified several areas in dire need of pedestrian-friendly upgrades along Wurzbach as well, ensuring that our streets are safe for those who are getting used to the Texan rules of the road. More work is yet to be done, and there is a lack of mental health providers for newcomers as well as a need to make sure that those refugees who come to our city with specific skills are provided the opportunity to use those skills. It's fair to those families, and it's a good thing for our community. Everyone in this field understands the importance of housing opportunities, quality education, transportation options, and health care access for all of our neighbors. This is especially true for those who are calling this city home for the first time. So I will repeat a promise to you that I've made at every opportunity. I will continue to elevate the public dialogue about our new neighbors and make sure that our community recognizes the stories of refugee families. And we will continue coordinating with anyone who seeks solutions to the challenges faced by our neighbors. So on this World Refugee Day, let us celebrate what makes San Antonio a great American city. That for those seeking opportunity and hope, we are a city of welcoming neighbors. Thank you for all that you do, and may God bless these families that have sought a better life in our city. Thank you. We're one of the most uh, diverse communities uh, in Texas, uh, San Antonio is, and in District 8, uh, even more so, the, the ethnic and uh, cultural, political, religious, socioeconomic diversity in this community is profound. Uh, so being able to work with refugees in different uh, communities and getting things right as a community in this area of town is so vitally important and says that we can, if we can do it in our backyard, we can do it in the rest of the city and the rest of the state. Actually, uh, it's, it's funny because this is where the medical assets are uh, in the city, the, the dense medical assets, medical centers here. We have the highest proportion of, of uh, refugees that are brought in through the State Department here in District 8. But the Wurzbach I-10 uh, corridor, th this area of town is actually the, the population center. If you look at a, dense, uh, a density map of the population, this is the center of town. So it is a extremely uh, metropolitan area, it is the place where Logically, if you were to point to where um, you know the the confluence of culture and religion and community are, uh, it makes sense that we're we're celebrating World Refugee Heritage, or World Refugee Day here at uh, St. Francis. So. We, we don't provide direct service. Uh, what we do is we provide um, support to organizations that are providing service, su uh, that provide support in these areas. Uh, so for instance, we work quite a bit with Catholic Charities uh, with their different programs. Uh, so it's not direct uh, service. But that's something that we're, uh, I mean, it's not all about capital. It's not all about revenue. So what I've been trying to do with the refugee summits is bring all the people together in one room, provide some, uh, I guess, a, a collaborative umbrella, a meeting space, and, and an effort to bring all the services into coordination because doing so we can find out where the gaps are we can also find out where we can find efficiencies uh, in the process too so um, there's a lot to be learned uh, there are many cities in Texas that are working on this Houston has a fantastic uh, refugee service community so uh, I've taken um, a trip out there to learn from their community as well uh, this is a this is not a problem this is an opportunity for us to show uh, how we can uh, work together as as a community and so uh, we're, we're glad to be part of the effort.